that presentation. We are now recording. There we go. So welcome everybody. I'm now going to share my screen, let in these few more people. And I'll start sharing my screen. There we go. OK, so welcome everybody to the year 12 section of our presentation. We are going to roll straight through into the year 13 section. So if you're interested in the whole two years and you want to keep uh, carry on attending, please do. It's absolutely fine. Uh, or if you want to dip out halfway through, that's absolutely fine as well. It's entirely up to you. So uh, I am Mr. Sykes, Associate Assistant um, Head Teacher for 16. Um, we've got with us joining us tonight, Kirk and um, L as well. I've not put your name down, L. I wasn't sure if you were joining us or not, so apologies for that. Uh, they're from Lancaster University. Um, so we're going to be talking through those things. They'll do their presentation. I'm going to then talk through the calendar of next steps that we have at IGS, how that links in with the things that, that Kirk's going to be talking about, and then uh, question and answers. Uh, so we can go through those things as well. I'll just stop sharing a moment just to let in those people who are waiting. Oh, they're in. They're in already. Oh, that's good. OK, then I'll come back to sharing my screen. Apologies. OK, here we go. So. There we are. So this is what we're going to be looking at this evening. So what should be a priority for students as they enter year 12? When do you need to start thinking about universities? It's something to panic about now. Um, financial implications. These things are important things, aren't they? So, you know, it's worth having a discussion about them early on so that we know what we're preparing for. And then how do we best support? How do we as a school best support and you as parents best support your child through post 16 onto their next steps? And how can we, as IGS, with our Next Steps programme, how can we support all of that process to happen in a smooth way? So we're going to listen to the presentation by Kirk from Lancaster University and Elle as well. Kirk and I had a big discussion, several discussions about this presentation, and he, he really wanted to emphasise, and I will back this up, it's not an advert for Lancaster University. If you really like what you hear about this and you are impressed, then of course, check out Lancaster University, that's fine. But this is a presentation about universities, so feel free to ask any questions at all. If you're asking really specific questions about really specific colleges at different universities and so on, then, well, you know, they probably won't know that. But in terms of the principles of applying to university, we can answer questions about any university that you want at all. And this presentation is about university. A lot of our students do go to university, but really genuinely, there's no pressure from us at IGS to try and force students to go to university. It's entirely down to students what is the best next steps for them. So with that introduction, with those caveats and, and things made clear, uh, I'd like to welcome Kirk and uh, I will stop sharing my screen there. Uh, here we go. And I will pass over to Kirk. Now, Kirk, I think that you can share your screen. We checked it with Elle before we started. Um, so I will let, I'll pass over to you. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much. I, I've just I pressed a few buttons. Hopefully the slides will, will come up in a minute. Um, can you see that? Can't see anything just yet. Oh, yes. And while I've while I've got my microphone on, um, if you click on the chat function, um, you can feel free to ask any questions as we go through and we can cover those at the end. So if a question pops into your head, don't wait until the end and forget about it. Type it in the comments, the chat section, and, and we'll come to that towards the end. Uh, OK, Brill, so, so I, I can see it on my on my team's view. Can you can you see that, Elle? No, no can't see anything on my side. OK, let's have a quick look. It worked when Elle did it. <laughs> the young generation are showing us up, aren't they? You're putting me under even more pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to just introduce myself, Kurt, while you get that sorted? Yeah, try that. Try that. <laughs> so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is L. Uh, looks like it's coming through now, Kurt. But yeah, just to introduce myself. So, I work alongside Kirk as a student recruitment officer at Lancaster University. I'm also a graduate of the university. So, um, if you are particularly interested in Lancaster, I am happy to answer questions around that. 
but as well as doing this job, I have also worked in a college, um, actually in South Yorkshire, helping students with the decisions and the process of going to university. So tonight, we're more than happy to answer more general questions about that process and how you kind of help guide them towards going to university if that is what they're looking to go and do. Right, the slides are now up, Kirk, so I'll pass back to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Elle. Um, so it, I can see it, but it hasn't come up in a, in a big screen. And I know that some of the slides are quite small, so I don't know how big it is on your screen. We'll just have to we'll, we'll give it a go and see, see how it works. Um, well, at, first of all, Mr Sykes, everybody, thanks so much for having us along. Um, we're, we're going to deliver a talk with the, pr probably the longest title of any talk that we give. And we we ummed and aahed and wrestled with this a long, long time. And we ended up with understanding the journey to higher education for parents and supporters of students in, in year 12. We, we do a similar uh, talk for students, for parents and supporters of students in year 13, uh, which we'll do uh, shortly. Uh, the, the, the reason why we picked journey uh, was because we feel that there are a number of milestones. It, it is it is a journey. It's it's not always easy. Um, and and you'll you'll you know, you, you know that already. But but we wanted to to highlight the fact that it's for, for us, it's about identifying, or the aims of this presentation, I should say, are, are, are informing parents. And the reason why there's an asterisk there is because we, when we say parents, we, we mean parents, carers, supporters, guardians. We're, we're completely familiar that the, the, the family dynamic is, um, is very varied. It has always been, but, uh, but language is important. So we're going to use parents um, but we, what we mean by that is is anyone that's got a responsibility for a young person going through through the journey with you. We want to identify in this particular session uh, what needs to happen, who needs to do it, and perhaps most importantly, when it needs happening. We, we're unable in this short session to tell you everything about what's going to happen over the next year. But we want at the end of it for you to have kind of a, or to have had a couple of aha moments where you kind of think, right, I, I've got a much better understanding of what I need to do. Um, but I also understand that there are a number of different resources available to me and I know where to go and get them. So I've now got a plan and I know exactly where where I can go next. As Mr Sykes already said at the beginning, it's really not about Lancaster. This is about about you and, and all parents that are interested in going to all universities. Um, so feel free to, to get hold of us and ask us pretty much anything about the journey. We'll, we'll do our very best. Um, most of you are probably somewhere on this page. Um, maybe you're all over it. You know, where do I start? How do I help my child set out in the right direction? How do I know which university is best for my child? Do I choose a course or university? You know, which which, which should be the priority? How do we pay for university? Will universities help graduates find a job? How do I know where I should be? Uh, do, uh, sorry, what I should be doing and when? COVID, all the uncertainties about that. Uh, and my child is first generation. Uh, am I am I on the back foot? Just a, a mention on that last point. We did also talk when we were when we were developing this series of um, of support measures. Should we be delivering something slightly different for first generation parents and families? And and we came up with with the idea that we wouldn't. And the reason for that is because all of the information that we that we share we think is relevant to to everybody. Um, families that have been going to university for, for a long time and, and those that are that are about to start the journey for the first time. And the reason for that is because um, the information changes from year, year on year. And this year is a, is a prime example. A lot of the dates do not follow what has happened in years gone by. So we feel that we're giving information that is, is relevant to everybody. Um, so I think it's important to make that point. I won't be able to answer all of these questions um, here and this is good news because you don't need to know all of the answers the year you'll you'll realize by the end of this talk that the year 12 journey really focuses actually on what your um what your sons and daughters are doing now it really should be about settling into year 12 and getting a good foundation ready for next year um so what will we what will we look at so we're going to talk through the resources that are available to parents that, that we feel are really, really important. And you'll be hopefully be, you know, make the make the choice to dip into those. They will support and they will sound very similar, I'm sure, to the to the support mechanisms that are already have already available to you through Mr. Sykes and, and the wider school. We're going to look in some detail at the year 12 timeline. Now I must I must say at this point again that our timeline isn't written in tablets of stone. It will be on our website very shortly um, and we won't 
change that too too much unless um, dates change or, or things come at us from uh, from UCAS and, and, and external bodies. But it's really important to note that um, Ilkley may have its own timeline, which might be slightly different, and that's, that's absolutely fine. Lots of different schools and different colleges do things slightly differently at, at slightly different times. Um, and as you get more familiar with ours, and and indeed the, the one that uh, Ilkley is is taking you through, you'll, you'll get a good understanding of that. I'll touch on the year 13 timeline, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on that for obvious reasons. And then we'll look at next steps, a parent checklist and answer some Q&A at the end. So let's go straight into the parent resources. What, what is it? What, what are they? Um, so resource one is a parent's email, super, an, an email address that you can um, that you can contact or use to contact us. It's parents at lancaster.ac.uk and you can ask us anything. Um, about university in general. We probably don't know the um, the size of the rooms at Loughborough or, or Durham um, and, and any specific information that you want from a specific university, but we we are very open to answering any questions about finance, anything anything about the application process, personal statements, the whole the whole range. We'll, we'll do our very best to, to answer those questions. And um and, and and at this point we're not we're not really interested in, in what university your child is going to, whether it's um Lancaster, Liverpool, Birmingham or or, or otherwise, it's it's really not important. So we'll give you uh, um some honest, transparent uh, feedback and, and we'll do our very best to put you in touch with people if we don't know the answer we'll get back to you super quickly um, and it's really really straightforward so an email address first one resource two uh, dedicated web pages so our website like most university websites is pretty pretty uh, sizable um, easy to, to find your way around once you get your head around it but we've um, we've got a, a, a separate area that is dedicated to parents um, which hopefully has has turned some of the information that, are, that is designed for students to, to be a little bit more parent friendly. Um, on there, you'll see a webinar series, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail. Um, there's a, a place where you can register for a newsletter. Uh, you can tick loads of boxes to say, yes, please send me emails and, and, and marketing stuff, or you can say, no, thanks. And you can just get the newsletter. It comes out once a month. Um, and in that monthly newsletter will be um, relevant information depending on where we are in the cycle um, and you can get prompts to the webinars that we uh, that we'll be running again these webinars that there are a couple of webinars on there actually that are relevant to Lancaster that there are a few why Lancasters but the vast majority as you'll see shortly uh, relate to any university application really um, and then lots of downloadable resources so a, um, a guide and, and a number of other things that we think are just helpful for parents uh, resource three uh, moving quite nicely on to the guide itself. So it's a bit like a prospectus, but it's for, for parents to navigate the landscape, um, telling you exactly what, you want, what, what you're what you supposed to be doing and when and, and who's doing what. And there's a, a pull out or there will be a, a pull out checklist. So you can cut that out, stick it on your fridge and just simply work down it. So you know exactly where, where you're where you are and, and what uh, what jobs are coming up um, for the month ahead. And you can have a, a hard copy of that um, or you can download a digital version. And then finally, uh, I've mentioned already the webinar series. Um, if you look on the right hand side, uh, if you go onto our connect pages and um, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in a minute, um, you will find a whole range of um, of webinars that, that span the whole whole university. But uh, but our website will showcase uh, our parent area of the website will showcase the ones that are relevant to to this um, this presentation now uh, and indeed you know the landscape. Um, uh, so what will you what will you get? Well, we'll guide you through all the important bits and pieces. And again, the timeline that I show you will will make that completely clear. Um, it can be quite complex, and th and there are lots of different variations along the timeline depending on on what happens in terms of applications, acceptances, rejections, and, and all of that. So um, so it breaks down what what can be quite complex into into simple steps, and hopefully will make it really easy for you. Um, and and there'll be two way uh, dialogue. So when you when you dial in a bit like we are now, there there will always be opportunities at the end to ask questions uh, and put them in the chat. So um, so that you get. Uh, all of the questions that you have ready ready to go. So let's move on to the the timeline itself. Um, it's hard it's hard for me to see this actually because it because it's so small on my screen. Um, but I wasn't planning on going through each of these. I call these kind of paddles. They they look a bit like Christmas tree baubles, don't they? If they're hanging down um, and and. Uh, and baubles in, in zero gravity if they're going up, but um, but I've referred to, to them as paddles. So let me just introduce what the timeline 
uh, will look like. And and I think it's worth mentioning, actually, that, uh, that I've agreed with Mr. Sykes that he will send this presentation at, out to you. So you'll be able to go back and forwards in, in this, this PowerPoint presentation and where there are, um, uh, I, I guess, where I've highlighted the the webinar series, they, they're um, hyperlinked. So you can just click on that and it will take you straight there. So as you use this this resource, this um, this PowerPoint presentation, actually, I think that in itself will be will be really useful. Um, and, and I decided what I would do is is not going to a huge amount of detail about this timeline as you see it now, because the, the slides that follow afterwards are more traditional PowerPoint slides with bullet points. And I'd like to talk you through what you should be doing each month. When you receive this and when you, if you choose to, go to the website and you can see both this timeline in graphic form and the uh, and the checklist and my bullet points, you've got the benefit of using of seeing both of those at the same time and it will make a lot more sense. Um, I, I can't show well, I could show you that at the same time, but, it, but in a PowerPoint, it'd be very, very cluttered. Um, so the key on the left hand side shows you uh, what what's you know what the colors mean um as, as a key or, or a legend would do um the the maroon paddles denote the the webinar talks that we that we deliver and and where they are in in the timeline uh, the blue paddles are the things that uh, students and parents should be kind of thinking about together green are things that universities typically do i can't say everything that all other universities do but but when I talk about uh, webinar series, uh, academic taster sessions, most universities do those. We, we do. Uh, I don't know exactly when when other universities will, will do theirs, but it will it will probably be, be very similar. Um, the grey paddle at the bottom is, is student finance. There aren't too many of those because we just highlight when student finance is open. And then the yellowy mustard ones are UCAS. So these are usually deadlines and things that are, are relevant to the um, to the to the application process and like i said i'm not going to go into too much detail because i'm going to cover it and also it's very small and it's hard for me to read um i've showed i'm going to show this version because um because on the website it will be in in vertical it will be a vertical version and the reason for that as you probably can work out yourself is that on a website you tend to scroll up and down whereas in a powerpoint presentation it's very hard to do that so so we we've cut and paste it in in a in a horizontal version in the guide you'll get it horizontal and on the um it, on the on the website you'll see it vertical it's exactly the same uh so back to back to the to the first part so that's september october and december um the year 12 timeline is actually very short that there aren't too many things you need to be focused on actually um and that's the second part february um through to june um in a moment, I'm going to go on to explaining exactly what you should be doing uh, during each of these months. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the year 13 timeline, which is which is quite different. So you can appreciate there is a timeline. You will be able to correlate um, what I'm about to say with with the paddles on the timeline in your own time. But in September, these are the sorts of things that we feel you should be thinking about. So Mr Sykes has already said um, it, it comforted me when he said, look, it is a big jump and it is um, moving from year 11 to year 12 is, is a huge jump, a, a massive um, shift in education styles. Actually, it's, it's complex um, in most schools and colleges. Almost half of the year 12 content is covered in, in term one. There are, uh, there are normally 16 weeks in term one uh, and in term two and term three, it's kind of revision and exams. But you do a lot that, you know, your, your kids will be doing a lot of work at this term. Uh, so for a parent, we, we would say that it's really important to identify progression stakeholders early. So form tutors, and I appreciate that uh, okay, the, the language might be slightly different, so um, so forgive me for that, but um, but form tutor or the equivalent um, subject uh, teachers, whether your son or daughter is doing A-levels or BTEC or IB or whatever they're doing, find out who the key stakeholders are, head of sixth form, head of progression, and um, and do your best to get in touch with them and, and keep in touch with them. That, that's really, really important. Um, successful sixth form are organised. They, they identify problems early and they adjust to independent study. These things are really, really important. Again, it's as much about settling in and making the most of year 12 for a year 12 parent as it is thinking about university, which, which is, is a little bit a way off. Um, 
successful sixth form um, in my experience and, and before I did this job I, I worked in boarding schools for 10 years and, and worked very closely with sixth form the ones that were the most successful were the busy ones so um, they were doing lots of clubs lots of activities they were all, they always had something on the go and they were balancing lots of things so my, my strong advice is make sure they're busy but the biggest shift of all between year 11 and year 12 is this adjustment of independent study that they've got to they've got to think for themselves and work independently and if they have any problems to 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 voice that early not to sit on a problem so the most important thing at the moment is to make sure they've made the right choices uh, with their a levels and and uh, and whatever it is that they're doing so moving on um september october um it's a really really good idea to to start thinking about the experiences that they're going to have in their sixth form which will form the backbone of their personal statement they don't need to worry about the personal statement at the moment year 13s are, are doing that now and they'll be working towards that um between now and christmas and, and that's where you will be this time next year but you can't leave it until next year you've got to use the best part of this year to really um get you know gather gather those experiences so extracurricular sports music clubs drama debating things like um volunteering a dv part-time jobs you know though though well dv especially those sorts of things you have to sign up for uh, usually at the beginning of the year it's not something that you can join later on there'll be lots of other things that you can of course but identify the ones that you need to make a decision on early Supercurricular activities refer to things that are related to uh, to, to ac academia, um, but aren't part of the normal curriculum. So thing over and above what your son or daughter is learning in physics or biology or geog geography. Uh, and a good example of this, um, and we'll, we'll talk about it. You know, have, I've, I've mentioned it already, but I'll I'll, um, I'll go on about it again and again. Is is these taster sessions? So university taster sessions. Um, external maths competitions, additional reading, all of these things need to be logged. Uh, and as a parent, it's a really good opportunity for you to, to, to get on, on, on their case about this sooner rather than later. In October, that's when the open day season starts. But for, for year 12 parents, it's really not, um, it, it's not a huge issue. You have got time. So you may choose to, to go and visit uh, universities in person between now and Christmas. But remember um, that there will there will be another season, which is later on in the year towards towards the end of the academic year. And most year 12s um, don't know what universities they want to go and visit at this stage. They'll leave that at until a little bit later on. There is a, um, a website called opendays.com, which showcases all of these uh, university open days. So you don't need to go to each. You don't need to go to five, six, 20 different websites. You can go to one website and you can plan your um, your tour of UK uh, that way. October through December. So as I said, most universities want to showcase their subjects and departments. They'll be running taster sessions. Some of those will be in person uh, for the last 18 months. Of course, most of that has been online. I, I predict that they will be with, with us for some time um, and, and there'll be a lots of lots of things that, that remain online virtual because uh, we found last year that we could attract people from people from all over the country of course you you, you know you make it a, we, we make it a lot more efficient for people to, to engage uh, nothing beats especially if you've if you've got a great campus um and, and we think we have there's no, nothing beats getting people on on um, campus but uh, but virtual stuff is, is um you know is, is very good in its own way so virtual taster sessions again um aimed at supporting the curriculum there's loads of good stuff to um, for your for your sons and daughters to, to get involved with um, and again it relates back to the personal statement so you need to be collecting these experiences as you go through December so so learn from year 13s as I said a moment ago year 13s are in the thick of writing their personal statements so it's really really important to to understand that personal statement deadline this time next year but, but since they're doing it now reach out to um, to year 13s uh, reach out to their parents if you if you if you're if you've got a close network and some of your friends have got children in year 13 and just just get a you know test the water what what is life like in a house with um, with a child that's filling out the uh, the personal statement it's pretty pretty hectic and you might be able to pick up a few tips ahead of um you know you have a practice run in, ahead of the real thing the uh, the UCAS application deadline um is late january for year 13 uh, 15th of october for for oxbridge so there will be year 13s that are actually um, getting getting ready to uh, to submit their application now. Um, it has been it has typically been the fifteenth of October, uh, sorry, fifteenth of January, but but that's moved back now, uh, and, and we'll probably be there for for a couple of years at least. 
Um, and then UCAS arrange HE fares between February and March. So, so there will be, and, and again, it's not something that um, that you need to um, go go crazy on this year, but just be aware that you can go and visit different um, uh, different uh, conventions and, and different fairs, and you will see you you know all, all of the universities will be there showcasing their um, their, their subjects and, and what they have to offer. So it's worth um, just bearing in mind what you know what sort of things that you need to know before you head head off. Um, in June and July, you should really now start to shortlist your five priority university visits. Um, on a UCAS application form, um, it makes complete sense to, to fill the full five applications that you have. Um, so, um, so make sure you're, you're gearing up to that. The summer is prime um, you know, visiting season, as I said earlier. The virtual open days, you know, resources, save time and money. So there'll be loads of loads of things that you can visit online as well. Most universities will want to do it face to face, but will also have a virtual offer. I'm, I'm absolutely certain of that. Um, and ensure that you capture and record the benefits of, of an experience for personal statement material. We, we've already we've already talked about that. So um, just having a very quick look at the year 12 webinar series that there aren't many because because you really don't need to do a, a huge amount at this stage. So if nothing else, hopefully I, I can reduce the the, uh, the blood pressure. You don't need to know everything about the application process. You don't need to know about accommodation. Um, we we advise um, that there are maybe three things that that you're that you're advised to do. One is is, is attend this 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 uh, webinar now. This this um, this. This session where we're, we're showcasing the, the road ahead. Uh, the other one would be uh, student finance. Um, I guess there's never, you know, it's never too early to really get a good understanding of that because because finances, you know, take some planning and, and you're going to need to work out, you know, where, where you where you kind of sit. The, the good news about that is it is not nearly as dark and gloomy as complex as most people um, think. It's it's really quite straightforward and, and and quite reassuring once you understand the system. And then um, the, the last one that we recommend that you have a look at is understanding the UCAS system and um, uh, and, uh, and and the HE fares system. So work out how it is that you that you shortlist um, and navigate HE fares. You know, how do the open days work? What, what are the things that you really need to to, to do and, and, and how proactive can you be? Uh, to make the most out of those opportunities i think i think as parents and, and, and carers and, and supporters i think it's really important that you, that you don't just turn up and let it wash over you be really prepared because you can make a massive difference and make, make a real use of those uh, of those opportunities so so that's that's the end of the uh, it is a pretty pretty kind of blast lots, lots of information coming at you but like i said hopefully i'm reassuring re reassuring you by saying that you will get the timeline you, you will get this presentation so you'll be able to flip back and forwards and see exactly um you know where where, where you need to be next uh just to go back to these questions um the, the reason why i've not answered many of these is because i don't think it's a great idea for parents that are at your stage at the beginning of year 12 to worry too much about the application process and UCAS and so much of the technical stuff until the beginning of next year. Um, if you are that sort of individual that wants to, to learn everything a year in advance, that's absolutely fine. You can either stay on and we're going to go through the year 13 cycle uh, straight after this, which is which is a, a lot heavier and there's a lot more, more information to know. And you can also um, follow, you know, follow your nose and find the year 13 webinar series because that is is a lot more uh, compact. There's a lot more stuff in there because we're dealing with results day and what happens on results day and clearing and UCAS extra. And there's a whole range of things that you'll need to know at that stage, but you don't really need to know it at this stage. Um, it would take four or five hours for me to impart all of that information um, you know, to you. And, and I just don't think it's, it's necessary at this moment. I said that I would give you a snapshot of the year 13 timeline. So this is this is it. Again, I I, I don't think we're going we need to spend too much time um, talking about this now. But you can see already that it's pretty yeah it's it's pretty heavy. So that's that's the first bit. Um, that's that's the next bit, and I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to find out in a second whether there's another uh, there's another section to it. There's not. Um, so that you know, it, it, there's a lot going on, and you can see a lot of a lot of yellow um, paddles in there, which denote denote things that UCAS are doing and, and, and options, and and all of those paddles won't won't relate to you. They can't. It's it's a it's in case 
that they kind of they cover different eventualities, which which will be which will be explained, um, I'm sure, by your school and um, and by our webinar series. So so the checklist for, for you, as a, by way of summary, um, settle into year twelve. Keep remember the key stakeholders and, and keep in touch. Um, in attend the Lancaster University webinar on student finance, or at least have some in input somewhere about student finance. We think that's probably quite a good idea at the beginning. Get started with experiences for the personal statement. So clubs, volunteering, DV, EPQ, things like that. Um, EPQ is the um, extended project qualification. Uh, I should have checked perhaps that that that, that uh, Ilkley do that. If you don't, that's not that's not a problem. But some some uh, schools and colleges that you do, okay, thumbs up. So you do do that. I'm sure you're aware of what that is. Um, it's a good example of of, of one of the academic options. Um, open day start in October, but most year twelves will visit shortlisted universities in the summer. So don't worry too much about that. If you do go on tour in October uh, and November, then you're ahead of the game. So that's that's no, not a bad thing. Uh, book summer holiday placements experiences early so if you think that that um, that particular course warrants some experience or, or a summer school then don't leave that to the summer because those places will be will be snap, snapped up so book early go to the or attend university virtual taster sessions and, and impress on your child to do that and check speak to year 13s about their personal statements um you know either go to lancaster's webinar on maximizing um open days and and, and um and UCAS fairs, or, or gets or get that information from somewhere else. Make an open day shortlist and go and visit in June or July, and then um, use existing university materials. So recording the prospectus to explore options. Uh, we're almost there. I'm conscious of time, and I do want to leave a bit of time for questions. And I know I know questions are coming in. So um, again, going back to the initial queries, some of some of this I've covered, and hopefully you can kind of tick that off and go, okay, I've, I've got a better understanding of that. But there's so much here that I'm deliberately not covering again because you don't need to know it at this stage. Final tips, final thoughts, and tips. So um, again, this you can't click on this because it's a it's a it's a presentation. But when you get this, you can click on the parent information um title there and it will take you straight to our website and you can start having a look at the timeline and you can click and book uh, webinars if if you, if you like uh, they're complete they're open access so anybody can join them um there'll be lots of people that stumble upon them when they when they visit our website um so so that's that um i advise you to and there are loads of recordings we we do a, a lots of why lancasters but there'll be lots of why liverpools and, and why loughboroughs and why oxbridge that there, there are there's a lots of virtual material out there so you can do a bit of research yourself and find out the ethos and, and, and the culture of different universities by sitting back and, and from the comfort of your own home just watching a, a 10 15 minute um recording a video uh, you'll get an opportunity to download a prospectus. It's good to have a variety of prospectuses so you can compare the two. So that QR code will, will take you straight to that. Uh, you can click that once you get hold of the um, of the uh, slides. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just open up the floor for questions. I know L would have been typing away um, and giving some answers. Uh, there's a lot of although i've tried my very best to kind of give you an overview there's still a lot of information and i know i've, I've spoken really really quickly tonight but hopefully you've got a good idea of because you wouldn't have taken all that in you now hopefully will be comforted that you're going to get a document that mr sykes will send you that will show you a timeline and you will also be able from there to think well i know where my next stop is if, if i wish to, to to go that direction you can access webinars you can access um the, the email you can access the guide there's a whole range of stuff out there and you can dip in and out of that as you see fit okay uh, i can see l and mr sykes there l over to you for some of the questions yeah I'll right, thanks, thanks for that yeah, hi, El. So I may just interrupt just for one moment um, because I think it might be worth me going through the plan we have for year 12 in line with what you've just talked about there. And that may prompt some questions as well. And then we can sort of answer both questions together, which I think would be would be really good. So I'm just putting a little comment in here. Please type your questions to the chat. Yeah, so I will start sharing my screen now. You may have to stop sharing your screen. Um, Kirk. Stop presenting, done it. Yeah. There we go. And I'll start sharing mine. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to present this now. So this is our calendar of Next Steps events. Now, there is an awful lot, and I'm not going to go through. Seems to have frozen. 
There it goes. Hopefully it'll start working in a second. I'm not going to go through and read absolutely everything to you. Again, this will be shared with you. Some of these dates as well are tentative. We've only been back two weeks, so this is what I'm planning. Um, but you can see we've got the Lancaster introduction. We've also got uh, next week uh, alumni from, uh, from IGS who are currently at St Andrews. They've got a session there and they're going to be having a chat with the students in year 12 about aiming high. Really believe in yourselves, not have this imposter syndrome. You guys who are listening now have got the opportunity to go to the very best universities if that's what you want to do. The very best apprenticeships, whatever it is, the pathway that you choose, we are here to support you with that. So if you've got something you really want to aim for, we're here to help you with you every step of that way. Um, we then have a little bit of a break, focus on A-levels, like Kirk said, very, very important. We look a little bit again round about January just to remind you of these sorts of things. And then the Apply Plus things, that's our group for people who are applying for really competitive courses, medicine, dentistry, veterinary science, Oxford and Cambridge. We launched the Next Steps program in earnest in March. And I'll just let you have a look at some of these things here. So I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm not going to read it all out to you. There is a heck of a lot of things here. You can see some question marks. They're still to be confirmed on the exact timings of them. But there are all sorts of things. Residential visits, supercurricular things, which Kirk mentioned as well. Personal statement workshops that we can put on there. All sorts of opportunities that we're going to be sharing. We're linking with our alumni. We've got a lot of alumni over the the years we've done things and they're really happy to help our current students. <laughs> There's all sorts of things going on. It took me ages to put together all of these things. So you can see, I hope, that we've got a genuine plan. It's a genuine programme that works through the year, which will take your children, you students, through this and gradually, step by step, get you ready for your application. Our next step week is the biggest of that. I don't have the details of that just yet but it's going to be a huge event for all pathways, not just university, apprenticeships, starting your own business, all sorts of things. We will be covering all sorts of things in there. So I hope you feel supported. I hope you feel that we've got this. We know what we're doing. and We can guide you through that. So my top tips for you, following on from all of this, this is all new. If you've got an older brother or sister, that's fine, but they're different to you. You are going to well, very likely choose diff make different decisions to them. So it is new. It can be scary, but don't panic. We've got this. We know how to do this. So follow our advice and guidance. Ask lots of questions, but really focus on your studies right now. We will take you through the rest of it. And if you do that, and we'll help and support you. I'm sure you'll do really well. OK, so we can now see if we've got any questions. So thank you ever so much, everybody, for attending. And um, so questions. Um, here we go. Uh, so one, uh, OK, so I suppose I'll answer that first one there. Um, Miss or Mrs Kirkpatrick, will the students be supported with their UCAS applications and personal statements, including for Oxbridge for IGS, so they don't miss deadlines? Yes is the short answer to that one. So we've got all our own internal deadlines, which I don't need to go into detail now, but that will start in the summer term. We will have our next steps week, which is a really big week of events, and there'll be specific tasks that students are asked to do. The form tutors will be supporting students through that process. Then you've got the summer, obviously. There'll be more work putting into it in the new year. Right now, I'm doing two hours every single week, what I call my next steps clinics where students can drop in or tutors can say, look, this person is struggling and I arrange it with them and I inform parents we're going to have a session on this. So the support really is there. Uh, we spend an awful lot of time supporting our students through this. So we will make sure nobody misses any deadlines. Yeah, very good. OK. Um, OK, I suppose I'll pass this one to um, to Elle and, uh, and, and Kirk. So Mark. Uh, writes, what advice or guidance would you give for helping students choose a university course and what resources would you direct students towards? Yep, so that's a really great question and something that we get all the time asked. Um, the advice I would give is to um, is to spend time on it. Don't rush that decision. Don't leave it till last minute. Do uh, get the student to uh, research it. 
good places to do that. UCAS is a great place to start just to, to get an idea of what's out there, what's possible. Then I would say go to individual universities' websites and then attend those events that Kirk talked about, those open days, because going in person or to an online version is a really great way to get a feel for a place and also get any questions that you've got um, answered as well. But the main thing I would just go with for the student is go with where you think you're going to be happy and go with what you think you'll be happy studying. It needs to be a mixture of the two. You need to be happy with the course because the courses do vary. There are some out there that are fairly static but there are a lot out there as well where they can vastly differ from one university to another. So really do look into what the course involves if that fits with you, but then also match that up with then a location that suits you, whether that involves moving away or whether that is still staying very local or even if that involves commuting from a home, if that's what you want to do. But it's about finding out what's going to make you happy because it's you that goes to university and spends all those years and has to do that course. But yeah. just try and get as much information as you can. Use all of the things that are out there on the Internet and go and speak to universities as well. They're more than happy to answer any questions. Yeah, absolutely. And we also we buy into a program called Unifrog, which is a web based program and um, they've got I mean, we'll be doing that from um, before Easter. We'll be doing uh, sessions in our CEP lessons. So once a cycle, they'll be having, students will be having sessions using Unifrog, doing research, looking into it, finding out how to do that, make it, recording all of their research and everything and, and really getting stuck into it. So the students really enjoy that. That's, that's good. It's really personal to them and we can support them with that. So hopefully that answered your question there, Mark. Thank you for the question. Um, Amy writes, will the current slides with the events timeline be made available afterwards? Yes, I'm going to save that into Shoby. Uh, I'm going to consult with uh, Miss Picard exactly which group I will put that into. So I will announce that via email with all the students and we'll put that on our weekly bulletin as well. So it's clear for everybody and you'll all be able to access that via the students accounts uh, on Shoby. So that'd be good. Lovely. So any more questions, uh, please type them in. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any of those. Uh, just, just while you maybe answer it. Oh, look, go on, Kirk. Well, I was just going to add, add um, what else said is, is absolutely spot on. Um, but I think there are two sides with choosing a university. Uh, the first one is even before you uh, start looking at different resources, it's a good it's a good idea to sit down and work out what you think are the priorities for you. So some some start with a course and think, well, that's the most important thing. Others start with location because of travel. Some think that sporting excellence, uh, reputation, there's a, you know, accommodation, there's a whole range of things that come together to make a good university experience. Uh, and even before you've been influenced in, in any way, it's a good idea to, to just work out perhaps what you, you know, what your child thinks they want from a university experience that will almost certainly change. Because some think that they want a big city in environment and when they get there, they don't and vice versa. Some think they want a campus and when they get there, they don't. So so be prepared to, to shift on that a little bit. But it's as a good starting point, just write down on a piece of paper what you what you believe are your priorities um, and then simply attend a most universities call them choosing courses and places. We've put a spin on that for parents. We, we've called it choosing courses and universities. It's not about trying to convince you to come to Lancaster. It, it, and they're all, and I, I predict that all of those types of webinars are the same, no matter what university you go to. So pick anyone and, and go to it. It will be half an hour's worth of considerations. It will literally talk you through the sorts of things you need to think about when you're choosing university. And many of those you wouldn't even thought about. You'll go, ah, I, did, I just didn't even think about it. But, you, but you're right. I really do need to consider that. So as early as you can, how, how, you know, get hold of one of those presentations and that will that will set the uh, that will set the scene and, and, and put you at ease completely, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, to reassure you as well, we are aware as a school, obviously, that you need time to go visit some of these places. So a lot of them put it on at weekends. That's obviously perfect. Um, but if you can't attend those at the weekends and you need time off school, just speak to us and, and we can arrange arrange what needs to be done so you don't miss your work and and so on with that so i'm just um just checking to see if there's any more questions 
No more questions. Elle's shaking her head. I've just been letting people in the lobby, so I've not been seeing any questions come in. Um, while we just see if there are any more questions coming in, I'll just say thank you again ever so much to Elle and Kirk. I know they're going to stay with me at least for the next little time because we are now going into the Year 13 presentation. So welcome to all the Year 13 present uh, parents and students as well. You've not missed anything. Don't panic. It's not that you've just joined in and it's suddenly finished. We've had a Year 12 section and now, of course, we're looking into the year 13 section. Uh, Elle, I can't see any comments at all. My thing's completely frozen, so you'll have to. Have we got any more questions at all? Uh, I don't believe so, but mine has done the same. Has <laughs> it? OK. Uh, I, I can't see any coming in. The, la the last question came in from Amy Stidworthy uh, about the slides, and we've answered that. I can't, I can't see any of these. Lovely. OK, well, if, if our system has let us down and you're shrieking at your laptop because it's not, we can't see your question, please just drop me an email. Uh, ask your ask your child to come and speak to one of us at school and we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions there. So thank you ever so much. We'll now move on to the year 13 section of the evening. So if you would like to leave, feel free. You don't need to worry about scraping your chairs or making a noise or anything like that. It's all fine on Zoom now. So you're free to go now. Uh, equally, though, if you want to stick around for the year 13 section, absolutely, please do. And I will just start sharing my screen for that. There we go. OK, lovely. So welcome everybody to the year 13 portion of our evening, our introduction to higher education uh, parents evening. So welcome, everybody. Feel free to ask any questions you like in the chat function. Um, I think we're fairly familiar with that. I think most of us now on Zoom um, on Teams rather. Certainly students have been used to that from last year. Uh, so any questions at all, pop them in the chat as we go through and we'll answer them at the end so welcome everybody this is our plan for the evening me to welcome you so welcome uh, we'll then go over to kirk and uh, l from lancaster university they'll give their presentation we will then look at the calendar of next steps for year 13 uh, and then we'll obviously have questions and answers uh, and then we're finished so that's it so <laughs> welcome everybody year 13 i think is really an exciting time it is where everything culminates together it all comes together Hopefully not in a scary way, but it all comes together to all students actually saying, right, I want my life to be like this. I want to go do that. I want to be doing that in my future. This is what is, is my passion. This is what I'm interested in. This is where I want to go. That is the whole point of education, right from being like four years old. When you first went into nursery, it's all led up to this point, which is you going out into the world and living the life that you want to live. I mean, how exciting is that? It's wonderful. And for me to be part of that, I, you know, it's a really exciting job that I'm involved with. It can be stressful and all the rest of it, of course, but genuinely it's, it's the most important thing in, in school, in education. So it's really, really, really exciting. But it can be quite daunting. We're aware of that. There's an awful lot of things going on. There's deadlines that you can feel like there's a lot of pressure. So genuinely, we hope that this uh, presentation this evening can help alleviate some of that, allow you to ask any questions that can make you feel that bit more confident and, uh, and that this is moving forward smoothly. OK, so we're going to have a look at some of these questions here. This was on the letter that was sent out. We will go through what our next steps plans are at the uh, IGS to help you move forward onto university. This is primarily a university presentation just by its nature, because of all the deadlines and so on. However, we do have a lot of support going on for our non-university pathway too. If you're thinking about that, if you're wondering about that, it's not the main scope of this presentation, but please do feel free to ask any questions at the end. I'll be more than happy to answer questions on, on either any uh, next steps destination at all. So this presentation is I'm going to pass over there to Kirk and Elle as well. I wasn't sure if she was attending us when I put this PowerPoint presentation together. So no offense, Elle. Uh, so both of those will be able to speak to you today. It's not an anchor, an advert for Lancaster. Kirk and I discussed that long before, and it's, it's not what we're about here. We want all of our students at IGS to go on the best next steps pathway for them. That might be university. It probably is if you're here, but there's no pressure from me for anyone to have to go to university. There's gap years, there's apprenticeships, there's going to get a job. There's all sorts of things. So as I said, 
you know, please ask any questions you want. So with all of that said, I will now pass over to Kirk. Stop sharing my screen. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Sykes. So what yep. we're going to do is while I fumble with buttons, because uh, we've done this once already. So um, if you're staying on uh, from the last talk, we, we, we've uh, presented to year 12, uh, to, to the year 12 cohort and um, uh, and parents, and we invited anyone that wanted to stay on afterwards to stay. So if you are staying, um, the, this this presentation will follow a similar format, but obviously focus on the, on a year 13. So I'm going to press a couple of buttons. I'm going to introduce L, who's going to um, give you a bit of a, a heads up about the Q and A and and how this evening's going to work. And I'll be back with you in just a second. L. Brilliant. Cheers, Kirk. So hi, everyone. I'm Elle. I work alongside Kirk as a student recruitment officer at Lancaster University. I'm also a graduate of the university, so I did study there. So if it is the case that you are interested in Lancaster, we can take questions about that. Uh, but as both Josh and Kirk have already said, you know, that's not the point. Today is about general information about the process of going to university, something that both myself and Kirk have now done for quite a while. Uh, so we're quite familiar with kind of what questions you might have and so hopefully this session should then answer those and if not if a particular question you have hasn't been answered by the content feel free to post that into the chat and then i'll either answer it during while kirk's talking if i'm able to or we'll have some time at the end to then answer it as well and we can sort of discuss and talk about it a little bit more detail um, but otherwise that is who i am so please make use of the chat please ask any questions that you have um, and I'll pass back to Kirk, who's not yet got the slides. <laughs> they, they were there. I saw them. And, and now it, it's just said, no, let me try that again. Let me try that again. Okay. I think even the computers decided, you know, it's nearly half seven. It's hard enough as well. It says no. Right. Tell me. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. They've come through now. So I'll pass that. back to you. OK, well, it's come through, but but they get the, the slides get smaller and smaller. Um, so look, here, here we are. Um, I've just noticed actually that the title is ever so slightly different to the one that um, that we had for the last presentation because the last it, it's meant to say an introduction an introduction to the journey uh, of higher education or words to that effect. Um, and I started the last presentation by saying this is the longest title of any talk that we do. Um, but having gone through this just just recently, about half an hour ago, a couple of things I think I need to add right from the get go. Um, I'm going to I'm going to show you there's a lot of information to share, for, first of all, and you're never going to be able to take it all in and you don't need to because it's being recorded and this PowerPoint presentation will be will be uh, made available to you. It's really about the aim, the aim of the session. I should have the, the next slide. The, the aim of the session is is to is to highlight some milestones it, the reason why the, the title should have had the word journey in it is because it, it is a journey um it's getting to the exciting bit as um, as mr sykes has already said um but but the timeline that we show which which is kind of the backbone of what this talk is all about is just an example um every school and college that we that we do this with has a slightly different timeline and that's absolutely fine there's no right on or wrong with this we we've come up with what we think is the right time to showcase certain things um uh, so so we're not competing in any way with the the great work that you're getting and the great support that you will get i i know that you're in really really good hands with mr sykes and his team so um so and, and mr sykes and i've talked about this in quite some detail Th this is about saying to you regardless of what university your son or daughter is looking at going to there are lots of universities out there and we're one of them that has a range of resources that's that's designed to make that process easy for you and if and if some of you end up coming to lancaster great and if, and if you don't that's absolutely fine so the, the the key takeaway message here is that we want by the end of this to have a, a much better idea about what needs to be done who, who needs to do it and most importantly when you know when it needs to be done which is why we're we're we're, we're kind of hooking all of this on on a timeline uh, the parents that word there has an asterisk uh, on it so it's worth mentioning why we use the term parents and supporters in a lot of our material but but we mean parents carers guardians supporters there's a there's, you know there are a number of different terms that we can use for that kind of family unit and we know that that um that the, the family unit has uh, over years has, has, has changed but if you're responsible for somebody going off to university then then hopefully some of the information that we're going to cover today um is is going to be useful for you um, typical questions and concerns that we get from both year 12 and year 13 parents are, you know, uh, how do I know which university is best for my child? Um, 
the court, you know, course or or university. Uh, every time somebody comes into the meeting, it, it blocks my my screen. I can't see what's underneath it. Um, course or university? What what should be the priority? Uh, how do we pay for university? Uh, how do I book accommodation? Will universities help graduates find a job? What do I do if my child doesn't meet the university offer? Um, COVID blended, how you know how will that impact on university? Uh, and who can I speak to if I have questions? Our aim is to answer most of these, but not all of them. We, it, it, there's no point in, in trying to answer all of these questions now. I'm going to show you where you get the answer to these questions. And if I didn't show you and you didn't pick up on anything that I'm offering, then again, I know that Mr. Sykes and his team will cover this. It's going to give you just another another opportunity, another avenue to explore. So, so the content we 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 start by looking at the support uh, resources that we're that we're offering to you. There are four, really really simple, not, not groundbreaking, but you can have a look at those and um, and hopefully that they'll be of some use to you. I'm going to very very briefly look over the year twelve timeline. Um, I hope that none of you will look at that and think, oh, I, I didn't do something on that. If that if if that does uh, relate to you, don't worry that there is still a lot of time. Uh, it's just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that we advise. I'm sure you've done all of those already. Uh, we're going to look into some detail about the year 13 timeline. I mean, it's a it's a long, it, you know, it's, it's a long period. It's going to go very quickly, but there's, there are a lot of things to do. Uh, but you're in good hands. So I have every confidence that 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 won't phase you. And then we'll look at some next steps. A parent checklist and a couple of other bits and pieces that we hope will will make life a bit easier for you over the next um, over the next year. So the four resources, put really really simply, uh, we've got an email address that we invite you to write to us. Um, you've got support on hand. I know that at Ilkley, but if you if you felt that you needed a um, a direct link to a university, then we're happy to answer any questions. And it doesn't matter whether or not you've uh, we don't check whether your child has put an application to us or not. We're willing to ask answer as many questions as we can. If we don't know, we say we say we don't know and we'll try and find somebody that can. Um, we're limited in our knowledge of other universities, but in terms of finance and application and UCAS, personal statements, uh, choosing universities, we'll, we'll get we'll 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 be completely transparent and um, and open to you, and we'll 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 get back to you pretty quickly. There's um, there's a member of the team that that looks after that email inbox uh, every day. The second um, resource that we have is a is an area of our university website which has a lot of information specifically for parents and carers. On there, you'll see the timeline. It's not on there right now, but the graphic that I'm going to show you. Um, shortly will be on there. You'll be able to scroll down that. You'll be able to hover over one of the paddles, and it will it will um, it will do that animated thing and, and show you a little bit more information. So hopefully that'll be quite useful for you. Um, there'll be our webinar series on there. Uh, this isn't specifically about Lancaster. There will be a few Why Lancasters on there, but if Lancaster isn't of interest to you, then you don't need to look at that. But there'll be lots of things on there like finance choosing courses and universities, uh, what happens on results day, the whole range of things that we think you need to know. And, and as I said, you're going to get a lot of that, if not all of it, from, um, from Mr Sykes and his team. But we, we, we run stuff to support that. So if you wanted to, to um, sit back and relax and, 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 and dial into those, then you can, you can find that and register for that on the website. And then there'll be some downloadable resources, some case studies, um, some Q&A, there'll be a whole range of things on there that we, we think might be useful for any parent looking for, um, for any university, quite frankly. The third resource is a guide, um, a parent and supporters guide, a bit like a prospectus, but covering the, the main topics that, that parents tell us they want information about. Again, the timeline will be in there, the checklist will be in there, be able to rip that out, stick it on your fridge and literally work down it. You will have, uh, again, uh, you know, make no apologies, I really want to emphasize that you are going to be well looked after at Ilkley, of course. They'll have their own checklist, but you can compare the two and and um, uh, and, and I don't see any major uh, issues with that. And then I've already mentioned the, the webinar series highlighted on the website, but the fourth and final resource that we're offering is a is a webinar series that you can um, you can sign up to. You can get prompts if you sign up to the to the newsletter and um, uh, and you can sit back and relax and listen to to somebody in, in the team that will talk you through finance and, and all the things that I've mentioned fairly straightforward. Um, at each of those, they're interactive, so uh, they're virtual for obvious reasons, but you'll um, you'll be able to answer, ask any questions of the team. Um, and some of those will have um, student ambassadors and a whole rate and, and different panels to um, you know different experts that will that will share information and answer your questions.
So uh, very, very quickly, uh, I'm just going to gloss over the timeline, if nothing else, to show you what this graphic looks like um, so that when you see it, if you did decide to, to follow up on any of this, when you see it, you know, you know what, it, what I'm talking about. So the year 12 timeline is, is quite is quite short, actually, because that there aren't too many things that you need to do in year 12. You need to lay the foundations for a good academic year for your son or daughter. You would have already done that, I'm absolutely certain. But you can see that we've color coded the paddles here. Um, the maroon ones relate to the webinars that, that I talked about and, and when they when they happen, you can find those on the website. Um, the blue ones are related to your son or daughter. They are kind of student action things. The green things are university uh, action. So there'll, there'll be things like taster sessions, open days. So anything green relates to a university. The mustardy yellow things are UCAS. Uh, and on the year um, 12 timeline, timeline, there aren't very many of those. You'll see in a minute on the year 13, there are quite a few for, for obvious reasons. And then the student finance one in grey doesn't feature on the year 12 timeline. That's not that you don't need necessarily to do anything with student finance. You can, but there aren't any deadlines. You don't apply for student finance, as you already know, in, in year 12. So um, I'm, I'm showing this version because on uh, on written publications, the timeline will be left to right. It will be horizontal. On the website, it will be vertical. And that's because, as you know, when you go to a website, you tend to scroll down and it will just it will just kind of scroll up and down. And, and, and as you hover over things, it will enlarge uh, and there'll be a bit of an animation there to give you a bit more detail. Uh, and that's the second part of the year 12 timeline. You can look at this in slow time and double check if there are things um, that, that you haven't done, I'm sure. Uh, and even if there are, it, it's no, no, no big deal. Um, the year 12 summary is basically about settling in, gathering um, experiences for the personal statement. So that's perhaps one thing that I would highlight if your son or daughter hasn't um, done done many clubs and societies and, and lots of experiences to bolster their personal statement, then it's probably a good idea to, to get those things done before the year 13 academic work really ramps up because it, it, it will. Um, you wouldn't have been able to go to very many face to face uh, open days uh, through no fault of your own. So it's probably a good idea to um, to, to get on board and go and visit some um, you can go to opendays.com and and, um, and and find out where they are um, and it's really just year 12 is all about learning about universities fine-tuning that kind of short list which um, which you guys will be doing now so again you can I'm not going to talk about that too much you can look at that in slow time the year 13 timeline is 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 longer well sort of it, there's, there's more in it OK, it, the, the physical graphic is longer because there's a lot more things in it. Um, I'm going to show that to you very, very quickly here. Um, and then I'm going to break that down in a more traditional uh, PowerPoint style with, with bullet points. I'm, I'm going to talk about these. Remember, um, you can compare the two and go back back through this when you get access to uh, to this presentation. Um, I've already talked about the legend and that, that doesn't change for year 13. So that's the first part. Uh, that's the second part. Um, and I think there's one more part. There it is. OK, so it really ramps up. Uh, that's a little bit small for me to see, actually, but it, it really ramps up towards the end. So let's let's go through it in slow time. This this is the, the crux of what we wanted to share with you today. So it's worth knowing at this stage that UCAS is a is a complex system with several timeline scenarios. Um, Ninety five percent of students and, and parents follow the 26th of January um, deadline timeline. Uh, and the 26th of January is what we call um, across UCAS and universities as the equal consideration deadline. And what that means is if, if students get their application in by the 26th of January, it's been for years and years, it's been the 15th or thereabouts, but it's been moved during COVID to the, to the end of January, then, uh, then all universities will, will make offers uh, equally, they won't close courses. They won't look at their courses and think, well, actually, we've had lots of we've had lots of applications for this course. And now we we might change the, the grade tariff up until the 26th of January. Everything has to be fair and the same for everybody. After the 26th of January, universities can choose to change their um, kind of change their mind and, and, and offer places 
and uh, perhaps what's not a level playing field. Um, so just bear that in mind. But I'm absolutely certain that 99 percent of colleges and schools, and I'm, I'm absolutely certain that Ilkley is, is one of them, will be heading for this this deadline here. And unless there's exceptional circumstances, you, uh, my advice is that you you hit that deadline. Um, UCAS is already open for, for year 13s to, to put their application in. Um, so you could if you wanted to get, get that in early. And for, for Oxbridge, uh, there, there's, there are usually dedicated staff. I, I know that's the case at Ilkley. Um, there'll be loads of people to, um, to support any uh, student that is going for Oxford, Cambridge um, and, in, and also veterinary science um, and dentistry. So those, those four areas are the ones that hit a, um, the October, middle of October deadline. If you're not Oxbridge, dentistry or veterinary science, then, then it's the 26th of January. That's the, that's the deadline that you need to hit. Um, October, so this is when, so next month, that, that's the kind of last push. If there are any gaps in extracurricular experiences and supercurricular experiences, so extra being sports and clubs and, and, and part-time work, uh, the supercurricular are all of those things linked with academic study. So they might be taster sessions. If there are gaps, then try and fill them because uh, at the same time now, your, your son or daughter will almost certainly be, um, be writing their, their draft personal statements. Uh, and there will be an internal deadline and you'll be guided through that by by um, Mr Sykes and his team. I, I know that schools will be prompted to uh, with students to focus on their application and personal statement in October. That's uh, for sure. Most universities hold open days and taste the lectures between October and December. So there's a good chance to finalise your shortlist. And again, if I haven't made it clear already, adhere strictly to, str to school deadlines for maximum support. There will be teachers out there that are willing to give uh, hours and hours of their own time, um, but you've got to get those drafts in to to those teachers when when they, when those internal deadlines um, are, are published. And I'm sure they're out there now. So between December and January, um, we've already talked about the the equal consideration deadline. So 26th of January, that's the one that you've got to hit. Um, some courses at some universities require an interview, so you it's adv advisable that you find that out uh, sooner rather than later. Um, in Oxford and Cambridge, they, they interview it for every course. Uh, at Lancaster, we used to interview for physics, uh, social work, engineering. It changes year on year, but um, but just make sure you are aware whether or not uh, the university will require an interview and, and then you know uh, adapt and, and practice accordingly. And most universities will respond to an to an application within 14 days. But if they don't, don't worry. Uh, again, you'll have a chance to to, to compare these notes. Um, with the timeline and, and if you if you want to press the play and, and hear it all out then you can listen to me ramble on and, and actually have the timeline in front of you but it's really important to know that if you hit the 26th of January uh, deadline to put in your application then universities are bound to respond to those to those applications by the 19th of May this is all in the timeline if you miss that 26th of January uh, deadline then you're on a slightly different timeline um, and it's a and, and, but but there's not really a lot of scope to talk about that now because there are loads of different variations. Um, my my advice is to to go for the 26th, as I've said already. So uh, most universities will offer places in line with their advertised grades grade requirements. So if um, a course is advertised at ABB and 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 a student's predicted grades are ABC then certainly at Lancaster, you'll, you'll almost certainly be made an offer, but you're most likely to be made an offer at what that course is, is advertised at. Um, very rarely will, will courses, will, will universities, well, certainly not Lancaster, but very rarely will, will they lower their offer. And, um, and un the unconditional offer scheme ha has now been scrapped by the vast majority of, um, of universities. So uh, gone are the days when, um, when if, if you're predicted uh, three A's, a university would, would turn around to you and say, we'll accept you uh, on, on three C's. We're, we're kind of moving away from that. If by the 25th of February you don't hold any offers, then you can go into what's called U, called UCAS Extra. Uh, and I'm not going to go into too much detail here uh, because this is, again, th this talk is about identifying opportunities to learn about this. Um, and, and I'm sure you've got that 
uh, support at school anyway. But this is what our webinar series is all about, to, to take you through the very specific nature of the application process, what happens on results day and what options you have. But, but essentially, um, UCAS Extra is for students that don't hold any offers. So they've either, either had uh, all rejections or they've rejected some of the offers that they've had. You can then make another um, another application, wait for that one to come back in. If, if you don't get it, you make another one. Um, but uh, on the UCAS uh, system, that they'll be able to explain that in more detail. You can apply for student finance for March. Um, it changes, the date changes in March from year to year. They don't publish that too far in advance, but it can take up to, to nine weeks to process. So we advise ev anybody who, who um, certainly if you're certain you need finance, but if you're not sure, it doesn't matter because you can cancel it at any time. But get your information into the England finance uh, system. It takes a long time. But if you do it in um, if you do it in March, then you know that that money will be ready for your child when they before they go to university. In June, uh, decision time. So we've already talked about the 26th of January as being the application process. Um, we talked about the uh, the deadline where universities have to uh, give you a, an offer or not they, they have to let you know what their thoughts are the next um the next deadline is the 9th of june and that's the deadline for students to make their firm or insurance they need to tell the universities now whether they've accepted that offer or not once universities have been made either a firm or insurance insurance offer by a student that will prompt them to reach out to those students to, to all students even though they know that the results haven't been given, all universities pretty much will reach back out to students and say, you've made us firm or, or an insurance, would you like to uh, apply for accommodation? And it's usually a, an online system. It's really, really easy. And um, and you can help your child kind of select the, the room and all the costs will be on there. And you submit that application. No money is um, it is passed at that stage. Um, and, um, and then that sits with the universities pretty much for the most of the summer. Uh, they won't they won't most universities won't tell you what room you've got until the end of the summer once they've got all of the uh, the applications in there are a number of other late application offer accept deadlines so if uh, an individual isn't going through doesn't think they, they want to go to university has missed the 26th of january deadline then they can apply later on um but like i said uh, earlier i won't go through that timeline now because it doesn't apply to too many people but there are other options out there just be aware of that August results time. Um, now, th this can be complex, but I've tried to break it down into the three most probable um, outcomes. One, you get the required grades and you either get your firm or insurance choice. You can't get both. Uh, option two, you get better grades, um, but not just better grades. In order to, get, to go into adjustment, you, you need to not only get better grades than you were predicted, but better than the offer that you had from any university. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about UCAS Extra and Adjustment because we cover this in, in, in great detail in, in other support um, talks. And then if you, sadly, if you don't get the grades that you were expecting or needed, then sometimes more often than not, you go into clearing. Not always, because even though I said some, most universities will offer at the, um, at, at the grades that they publish, uh, when it comes to results day, uh, there will be there have been lots of students that are sad because they they believe they've not got into their university, but the university has still accepted them. So when they check the UCAS track, they've actually been accepted, uh, which is brilliant. So so just be aware of that. Again, we've got a talk on what happens on results day or preparing for results day. We, we go into great detail about how this all works and some top tips about how you can prepare. Um, Elle and I have sat on the clearing lines um, for a couple of years uh, now, and um, and we know it can be a really stressful time. And there's some really simple things that you can do as parents to to help re re uh, calm the nerves and just think clearly um, because it is it is a stressful time. Um, and then in uh, in August, then you're firming up your accommodation. You're linking with departments. You know where you're going now. Departments will start to reach out to you to introduce themselves. They'll um, they'll give you a reading list. They'll tell you how the, that that department works in a bit more detail, and you can start to plan and pack. It gets very exciting. And then September, October, uh, most universities start in October. You're you're kind of finishing off planning, packing. You've got your welcome week. And now you're at university, joining clubs, societies, meeting new people, uh, and year one is usually 
about settling into the degree level uh, uh, environment, the teaching learning environment, and bringing everybody from from who's come from all over the country and, and probably all over the world up to the same level, uh, so they can pro progress onto year two and three. Um, and and you know as well as I do, one of the great things about university is developing those those interpersonal skills, that interdependent skills. So um, just highlighting the, the the webinar and support um, talks that, that we that we give. Student finance, um, the talk on understanding UCAS and, 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 and choosing a university. We look at um, results day and how, how that could play out and, and the sorts of things that you might want to prepare for. And then that kind of going off to university about accommodation and well-being and the support measures, um, how you uh, you know contact with fellow students, the departments, that, that whole that whole transitioning from school holiday in, into university so there are four four separate talks that we that we cover um, during the timeline and you'll see those when you refer back to it so a checklist let's just very quickly have a, sum a summary of the sort of things that you need to do um pretty much in in um in in um time time order so fill any gaps with extra supercurricular activities establish internal deadlines for the UCAS application, they'll be they'll be you'll know those now, I'm sure, for the personal statement. Visit remaining shortlisted universities and tap into the virtual taster sessions. Um, get the UCAS debt application in before the 26th of January. Utilize uh, UCAS extra if needed. You may not need that. Apply for student finance if needed. That that comes around about March time. Uh, make your final firm insurance choices by the 10th of June. Okay. Apply for accommodation that most universities will reach out and, and start that process for you. Have a plan A, B and C ready for results day so you can have lots of different eventualities. Secure the best university option available, of course, and universities want that no more than you do. Um, um, plan and pack ready for university and then attend and you know attend any webinars. But you don't need to do that with us. You can do that with anybody, but just furnish yourself with as much information as you can. So I hopefully we're coming to the end of the content now. We're going to come to questions in a second. Hopefully I've given you um, maybe an answer to, to a couple of these these questions. But uh, but I really hope that I've given you an idea of where you can go to get um, more information. Um, Mr. Mr. Sykes and his team will have this in hand and they'll be guiding you through the process. But you have the option of dipping into another set of resources that gives you, um, uh, you know, other bits of information. Final thoughts and tips. So again, when you get hold of this presentation, a number of, uh, of these slides have hyperlinks, so you can just click on them and it will take you straight to the places. So this is where you can um, find our website with, with, the, with the timeline on it, the, the webinar series. You can sign up to a newsletter. You can click no, 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 if you, if you don't want to be badgered by marketing and, and that sort of thing. You can simply receive um, information each month that will relate to where you're at on the, um, on the timeline. I advise you to watch as many um, why Lancasters, why Birmingham, why Newcastle, why Ox Oxford. There are loads of videos out there, uh, recorded content that, that highlight the universities. If, if, you, if your son or daughter isn't um, quite sure, you can, you can help them. It's really easy to do that. And, um, and you can download our perspectives if you want to. Uh, I'm sure you've got perspectives all over the place at the moment or, uh, or about to. So yeah, get, gather as many of those as you can and that'll give you a good idea of the course breakdown, the modules, which ones are core, which ones are, are flexible, um, the grade tariff. It gives you all of the information in, um, in there. And finally, um, thanks a lot for your time. Um, I'm going to hand back to Elle now who, and Mr Sykes, who will go through any questions that we that we have. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, thanks so much. thanks very much, Kirk. I'm just going to share my screen uh, just for a couple more things from me, and then we'll go to the uh, the questions. We've had a couple of questions, and I think we've we've answered a few as well. So uh, so that's been good. Uh, so please, plenty more questions. Throw lots of questions in there. This is a this is your opportunity. We're putting this on because you know we recognise there will be things you're not sure about. So please ask. As simple, as basic as it may seem, please ask because there's bound to be somebody else here who wish they'd asked that question as well. Uh, so we've put this on for you to ask those questions. So please do, please do do that. So I'll just share my screen now. Let's have a little look. So yeah, that was me looking up and double checking that they haven't actually published yet the dates of when the exam results are being published. We don't know. 
Um, this student room predicts it may be the Thursday, the 11th of August, but we just don't know. So I wouldn't, I'd be, I'd wait until you book any holidays would be my, would be my advice on that one. Uh, so let's see if I can just go into my presentation. Let's start at the beginning again. How annoying. Please bear with me while I scroll down. It was set up perfectly about two minutes ago and I just checked it. Skimming through the year 12 and apologies for this. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, this is not very professional, is it? Here we are. So, okay, so welcome to Kirk. So we'll now have a look at our next steps um, um, plans. So these are our next steps plans. Some of these dates are tentative. Obviously, we've only been back two weeks. So, but this is the year plan that we have for year 13. So obviously, we're starting off this evening with Lancaster, the introduction to the higher education. Uh, parents information evening which obviously we're all here enjoying um on wednesday next week we've got sheffield university joining us online and we have personal statement workshops so any students who are still struggling with their personal statement don't worry we understand it is challenging so we've got um, sheffield university coming on to do that um we also have which i'm not going to talk about too much here because this is for the uh, apprenticeship students and they may not be here because this is higher education but on that same day we have an apprenticeship session as well by our careers advisor. So we are really looking after all students. We really do want to make sure that that is right. Um, we've got medicine and dentistry interview coming up with Sheffield University in October. Um, we've also got, which I don't have on here yet, actually, because I didn't know the date of this when I put this document together, but we've got uh, interview practice going on at Harrogate Grammar School, uh, which, we, which we sign up to every year as part of the Red Kite Alliance, and we will be um, doing part of that as well. Uh, we've got the same thing for Oxford and Cambridge interviews um, and medicine interviews as well. We've got amazing apprenticeships, as I said, for the apprenticeship students. PBT, your tutors are going to be supporting you every week in PBT and in form time as well. Uh, there's our Oxbridge interview preparation in October there. I've got my dates in the wrong order. Uh, but it is there. Next steps clinic. So this is something I'm running uh, twice a week for an hour. So two hours a week, an hour on a Thursday and an hour on a Friday, three till four after school, obviously in F hall. So if after this session, you're like, oh, I really need to have a chat about something. I really need to ask some questions. Please come along. It's not a detention. You don't have to stay for the whole hour. Come and have some individual chats and individual support and then leave. That's absolutely fine. But it's there for you. Two hours a week, I'm dedicating to doing exactly this and just answering any questions you've got, along with your tutors who are doing half an hour a week as well. So please, please get involved. You know, make sure you're asking those questions and we can support you with that. Uh, all sorts of preparations, apprenticeships, things, medical interviews, interview workshops from Queen's College, Cambridge. We're going to get our alumni involved. Other apprenticeships, we're going to have another parents information evening, life after IGS. That's going to be a good one. Again, mainly looking at university, but other pathways as well with our alumni who are going to come back and tell us all about how they're getting on and what tips and advice they'd give to the students now in the situation they're in. We have our weekly PowerPoints that we share. I will just share one of these now because this links in with the, uh, the dates that Kirk mentioned. These are our calendar of deadlines for the students. So we've got the early entry students on the right hand side. So 15th of October, uh, medicine, dentistry, veterinary, surgery and Oxford or Cambridge. Those are your early entry um, categories, uh, courses that you're applying for. It takes us some time to be able to process all of these things. When you submit your application on UCAS, it doesn't get pinged straight off to the universities. It comes to me. And what I do with my team is just double check it and then we send it off. So you don't need to be overly panicked about not pressing the button. Press the button. Come and see us. Make sure that you're talking with us all the way through. We will send it off. We will have a look at it for you. But please make sure that you're doing this well before the date. And if we look at the date for the normal uh, application date, which is in uh, the 26th of January, we want to get this done before the Christmas holidays. OK, over the Christmas holidays, you know, teachers, staff and so on, you know, it's a holiday. We can't promise that we're going to be able to put an awful lot of time into it. We want to be able to put the time into it. We want to be able to help you and support you. So get it done in December. Then you can come back in the new year knowing it's all sorted. It's all sent off. If there are any issues, we can tweak them here and there before the 26th of January. 
but we want to give us all of that time to really focus on the A levels because that's what is going to determine whether you actually get to university or not because the grades are a huge part of that. So our deadlines are there designed to help you and to structure things through so that there's no panic or stress or anything like that. OK, so I will uh, try and go back to my presentation now. There we go. Uh, we've done that. So yeah, so we'll now go to any questions. Um, so yeah, I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, we'll go to any questions that we have. Uh, well, I think some of the questions have been answered in the chat, but there is one that's that's come in about adjustment. Uh, and L is going to put a link in the um, in the chat so that you can find a bit more information about it. Um, but but in a nutshell, adjustment is um, gives students who who have done better than they expected a chance to re-engage with universities and uh, and to try and secure a course that they didn't think that they that they would be able to get on initially. So think of a scenario that a, a student. Uh, had predicted grades of three Bs um, and and therefore looked for courses in and around three Bs and and had offers th for three Bs and accepted th those offers. But on results day, they got three As. Now that opens up potentially a whole new set of, uh, of courses. They would probably not have been able to do medicine with three Bs. Um, so they've chosen to do, I don't know, chemistry or biology. But now potentially medicine is on the cards. As long as the individual has got grades higher than any of the offers, not just the predicted grades, any of the offers, and they can go into what's called adjustment. And it, it simply means that they can now shop around. They don't have to relinquish their firm choice. They can still keep that as, as I wanted to say insurance, but maybe that that, that confuses things. They, they, they've got their firm choice, that's safe. They can now approach other universities and say, I've actually got three A's and I'd really like to do medicine or whatever or whatever or law, whatever it is at, at your university. Would you be interested in, in offering me a place? And, and if that university says, yeah, absolutely, there'll be an exchange, there'll be some emails going back and forwards, um, then that student can then release themselves from the UCAS system through track. And uh, and input the the new offer at the new university um, that wanted three A's. So that that's it in a very simplified form. I, I don't know if it's any more complex than, than that in real life. Um, there may be a couple of hurdles to, to jump through, but the key the key thing is that um, that our advice is always never do anything with your with your firm or insurance offer if you're going to change and, and you know change direction you, you've always got that um safe in the bank you then and and this is this isn't a a backdoor uh, option this is completely legitimate all universities know that this is happening we, everybody is is advising it lancaster is very very happy to release students to other courses ucas changed its system so that students can self release so they don't have to be they don't have to badger universities anymore and say, please release me. I know I've got an insurance offer with you, but I want to go somewhere else. Students can do this themselves now um, and they can go off to a university, a different university that they perhaps didn't think that they had an option of getting into. Um, L or Mr. Sykes, anything to add to that? That's that's my take. Uh, no, I, I think that covered it. Do you have anything on the on the adjustment there to add, L? Um, no, I don't think so. I think something to say obviously it's not not everyone will have that situation but if you think that you that might apply to you when it comes to results day you know go to the staff around you and and ask them about it um you know and again universities when you contact them certainly at lancaster say you were to cut try to come to us through clearing so you ran the clearing hotline we would then based on what you kind of said to us be able to look at and say to you well actually I think it's adjustment that that's the one for you because I can see you've actually ex you're telling me you've exceeded what so universities will also do that so the clearing and adjustment is kind of the same process it's about changing where you want to go just the advantage of adjustment is that you keep that place secure you don't kind of um, say goodbye to what you're already holding. Mm, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, there's some questions there which I will come to in a moment because I think one of them, the first one, is directed to me. But I think it might be worth just mentioning 
uh, or re-emphasizing this in terms of how the UCAS thing works. So that when the deadline comes, students will make five applications via UCAS to universities. Those five applications get sent off. The universities will then get back to students via UCAS tracks. So it's all on the website. It doesn't come to me. It goes directly to the university, the UCAS uh, uh, you know, system that the students can access. It's their own system. So they get all of their information first. You will receive however many offers from those five. Hopefully, you will receive all five offers and that'll be great. Some of the offers may be dependent on interview. So you may be invited to interview. There may be um, you know, admissions tests involved with that. If you're thinking that's anything to do with you, come and have a chat with me. I'm more than happy to talk to you through all of that. But you will receive X number of offers, hopefully all five. Once you receive all your offers, you can then make two choices, only two. You make one, your firm choice. That's where you really want to go. And then you've got your second choice, which is your insurance choice. Now, there's no point in picking an insurance choice if it's the same entry requirements as your firm, because if you get those, you will be going to your firm and your insurance will cease to exist. Uh, equally, if you pick an insurance that's got higher points than the one you really want to go to, again, you've got no insurance, it's not there. So you want to make sure now that you're looking at some places that are not your absolute top place, but have lower entry requirements so that you've got that safety net. And then we don't know the future, we just don't know how things play out, but you've got an insurance choice there and you know you've got that safety net because you're pretty sure you're going to get those grades no matter what happens. And if you do, you've got a place that you'll still be happy to go to. None of that is set in stone. You can then change your mind. I don't actually want to go to my firm or my insurance. I want to go travel the world and be a lion tamer or whatever. Fine. You know, it's not a prison. You can do that and head off and have a fantastic life doing whatever you want to do. And at every step of the way, I'll be there to talk to you on results day, on email and so on. So we're here throughout the whole process. So I will now go to the, the questions that were asked there. So Jane, uh, can I, my son doesn't want to attend uni. That's absolutely fine, of course. Um, you'd like to do an apprenticeship. Yep. Will we receive dates and help how to get best support, please? Yes. The dates thing is a little bit more uh, muddled because there isn't a set deadline for apprenticeships. Every apprenticeship provider pro has their own deadlines and some of them are advertising now and will have a, a reasonably short deadline and we'll get it all sorted. And then we'll be, you know, in the summer when you've got your results, you will have your apprenticeship place, but it's all done and dusted now. Others won't even advertise for the next couple of months. You know, so it is in terms of dates, there isn't something that we can do for that because it's it's just so different. However, we are putting on support. So uh, I went through in the PowerPoint on Wednesday that's been shared with students. So it's been emailed to all students. If you check that uh, with, with your child, I don't know who it is, um, but they will have that in their inbox. That will go through the plans that we've got to support apprenticeship um, applicants right the way up to January. And then there'll be even more following that as well. So we've got Miss um, Mitchell, our careers advisor. She's Students know where her office is. Go along and see her, drop her an email. Uh, the Next Steps Clinic is not just for universities. It's for apprenticeships as well. It's Next Steps Clinic, not UCAS Clinic. So two hours a week, come along to that. Drop me an email yourself if you've got any specific questions and I can look into things for you. And um, yeah, genuinely, honestly, there's there's loads of support on there. We've got two, um, well, we've got two sessions with an apprenticeship provider, one of the top ones around. They're going to be coming in. That's on the PowerPoint there as well. Um, yeah, so honestly, we really do want to help all of our students, whatever pathway they want to do. And apprenticeships, there's some amazing ones out there. So yeah, we want to uh, support those students, absolutely. Um, so I'll, I'll throw this one open to you guys uh, and then maybe I'll, I'll throw my thoughts in as well. How can we direct the personal statement toward particular courses when the same one will be sent to five different universities? Yeah, so that's a that's really, a good, really question, good question, something we get asked a lot. lot. If it if is it the is same, same subject, subject area, area roughly, roughly then really, then really try and find the common, common ground across, across the different, different courses. courses. There'll probably, There'll probably be, some be some modules, some uh, particular topics that you know are covered in all of those courses that you can kind of bring up and they can write about the particular interest in that area 
Um, where it gets a little bit more difficult is where they have a bit of variety in their choices. So perhaps, for example, one of them might be film and English literature, but another choice is just film and another choice is um, just English literature, things like that. Again, just try to draw on things that are most applic applicable to all of it. And at the end of the day, universities know that this is the system. They know that you're applying to five different courses with this same application. So they know that you're trying to make it fit for several. So just try to find the common ground where possible. If it is something that is really different, so one of the choices is biology and the other choice is film, and you're just thinking there is no common ground here whatsoever, then you can um, contact the univer contact one of the universities and say, can I write a particular personal statement for the course that I'm applying to you for because it doesn't match up with my other choices? Um, the universities don't have to say yes to that, so they can turn around and say no, but I think it's highly likely that they would be open to accepting a different personal statement if you're able to explain, look, my interests are just so varied and I'm really interested in your particular course, but my other ones don't kind of fit, but I want to write you a good personal statement that fits to the course that you're offering that I am interested in. So try and find the common ground. If it is joint things, try and make a point of that, because I think that's really good to point out why you are applying for both those subjects and where the common ground is. You know, the film and English literature, film scripts at the end of the day is a form of English literature. So there are links that will exist and you'll be able to, as students, work that out because you know these subjects and you're interested in them. So you'll be able to see why it is that you're interested in, in several things. But hopefully that answers. Kirk, uh, Josh, I don't know if there's anything else you'd add to that. I would just I would just add one other thing that, um, that not only the universities. So I agree entirely with everything you've said, Elle. Um, the universities get one application. They don't see where where you've else you've applied. So it's a really you don't need to say I would really like to go to Manchester uh, or, or, you know, or a degree from Liverpool University would really help me. D don't put that. Um, the, the universities know uh, that you're probably applying to others, but they don't know which ones. We, 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 we don't see that. Um, and to put it into context, to give you another example, that med medical students have to have a non-medicine um, subject. Now, some, you know, many of them will put biomedicine or something that's related, but they may choose to go medicine or bus, something completely random. Uh, just to underline what Elle said, each admissions office has human beings in it that know the system and they want you to... They, they want to look at you. They want to see the skills that you have. Um, yes, they want to see motivation, but they do understand that that we have different choices and, and they're, they're, they're going to take that into account. So, um, yeah, hopefully that, that just reinforces what Elle, Elle said. Josh, right. anything, anything yeah, from you? Absolutely. I would agree with all of that. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't really change anything you've said there other than to say when it comes to individual things, just come along to the Next Steps Clinic and I'll sit down and talk you through with it. Um, I've got another question about this year's different students. I think I think it refers to, I'm, I'm interpreting that about n numbers. Are, are you guys? Yeah, so, so I would say it's about deferred students. So those that have yeah. applied for oh. deferred entry or have, have since decided to defer. Um, just to reassure, this is something that happens every year. Every year there are students who either intentionally apply for deferred entry because they want a, a year off to go traveling or, or do something else or get work experience or, you know, they've just got other plans. But uni is one of those, but just not immediately. They want a year before that. Others, again, start university, uh, go down that route and then decide, actually, I, something's happened and they need to pull out for a year and then come back later so every year there's a portion that go that are in that boat of being deferred so every year there's there's those as well in the pot as well as everyone who's applying for that year so it obviously does affect the numbers because there are those students but I really wouldn't worry about that then stopping um, those who are applying this year from being able to get in you know, there are still plenty of places available at universities. They're not going to be completely gone with deferred students. It's going to be a real small handful. And even with COVID, because in, in some ways this is the better year for it because people have kind of 
gone to uni, you know, are going to uni now, you know, they haven't. Whereas the year before, the year above you guys, it was probably a little bit more that would take in deferred entry. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Some of that happens every year and it doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a space for you at a university. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when are the UK's clinics in school? So I've answered that on the chat, but just just to mention it to everybody, it's every Thursday and Friday, up to up to when they're all finally sent off, of course, uh, three till four, and they're held in F Hall. Um, so that's where you can have some really concentrated time with me. If you do pop by my office and you've got a quick question, then pop in. You know, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, Obviously, I'm, I, you know, I'm rushing around. I'm doing all sorts of things. This is my top priority, though. Genuinely, you are my top priority right now. Um, but it may be that I'm having to do something for a lesson that's starting in 10 minutes. So I just cannot give you that time then. But I, well, I'm letting nothing get in, in the way of these Next Steps clinics. It's two hours every week just for you. So, yeah, do make sure you're using that that time um, because that's obviously why we're all here. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, another question coming in. Very good. Thank you, Maisie. Do you think students should mention how they've had to adapt with remote learning, COVID, in personal statements or not? I'll pass it over to you two guys. Uh, well, we're, we're both chomping at the bit. Um, I, I would say yes, but but keep it keep it positive. Um, you, you know, universities, admissions staff, we we've all been impacted upon by COVID, and and a lot of that has been challenging, and it and it's been negative, but. There were, there are genuinely, I think. I'm not just saying. I think there are, gen, there have been genuine opportunities to do things that you perhaps haven't been able to do. Focus on those things. Nobody likes to hear or, or listen to or read. I haven't, I haven't been able to do these things because of COVID. Um, whilst that may be true, focus on on things that you have done. Remember, it, you know, a personal statement isn't a million miles away from a job interview, uh, and and all universities will want to see proactive creative people that can adapt people that can think laterally um, and we've all had to do that um, but there may be things that you that you've tried during covid maybe you've picked up a musical instrument um, if you haven't been able to uh, to do as much work experience maybe you've helped out around the family maybe you've tutored some of your younger brothers and sisters because of homeschooling maybe you've helped out around the house some more you, you need to focus on the on the positives of covid and and how you have done things that you wouldn't have been able to do or otherwise if you link that where you can to the skills that you've identified in the course that you're looking for so uh, i mean i could give you loads of examples but but i'm sure you get that already identify the sorts of skills that some of these courses are looking for try and find evidence of things that you've done even through covid uh, and link that link them and you'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, oh. I completely agree with that. I think something just to be careful with, and that's not just with statements around kind of remote learning and COVID, but just generally advice for the personal statement. You don't want to say something that's really quite generic. So it does need to be kind of more personal to your circumstances. So if you are just putting in the line of, um, I adapted really well to remote learning, that's not personal to you, nor is it being evidenced, actually. You know, where's your proof that you did adapt really well to it? I'm sure you all did. I'm sure you've all done fantastic. But you do need to provide evidence with these. So, you know, you need to expand on that because you can say, I actually improved my grades with it. You know, something like that would then help to show that you, you know, you evidence it. So just it's a great thing to include. Just be careful, like anything in the personal statement, avoid being too generic and avoid not explaining the relevance of why you're saying it. So like Kirk's point about bringing in the skills, that's great because that helps shows why you're talking about it and why you're telling them about that. Yeah, I'd agree with all of that. And I think bear in mind as well, we write a reference for you. So keep everything in your personal statement 100% positive. But if the wheels have come off during COVID for, for very real reasons, let us write about that in the reference. So just have a chat with your form tutor and we can make sure we put in the, that kind of thing and you can just be super positive in your personal statement. So there may be context there that needs to be explained, but I wouldn't worry about explaining that in your personal statement. Keep that positive, keep that showing of the qualities you've got the positive way that you dealt with everything, and then we can put the context in there in our reference if it needs to. Um, please do talk with us if you want to do that. Um, 
uh, because it's, it's kind of a bit of a dialogue between us that we make sure that between the personal statement and the reference, we cover everything. Uh, and I'd say equally as well, if there's stuff that you really want to get in your personal statement, but you're just too good, you've done too many wonderful things and you just can't get them all in, let us know and we can see if we can weave them into our reference for you as well. Um, okay, next question then. When do students get access to UCAS predicted grades and references? Okay, this is different this year and it's been a bit of a challenge. So we had a bit of a situation, well, not a situation, the government moved all the goalposts in the summer. So we had situations where students were doing external exams and they were, but they were not proper external exams they were kind of done under controlled conditions with us. So we just could not report data in the way that we normally would do. So that meant we had to have an embargo on everything because we'd have been going against uh, JCQ regulations, uh, which is a really serious thing for a school. So we just we just couldn't share anything at all. And the issue now that we've got is that normally we sort of release them as they're being populated. We release it on Unifrog and students can see it as it's popping in there. Obviously, when we're going to do a big release to everybody, we've got to make sure we get it all right. Because normally if there's little bits here and there, you have little chats with your teachers as it goes over the few weeks at the end of the summer, start of, start of September, and it's all part of a dialogue. When we suddenly release everything all in one go and there's any issues at all, it suddenly looks really bad. So we're just double checking everything. Um, it's a lot more complex because of that JCQ regulation. Apologies that we haven't got them out already, but we want to get them out right. If you are Apply Plus, you're in a different situation and you need to know exactly what they are right now. So come along, drop me an email, come along and see me. I will tell you exactly what they are. If you've got any concerns about your predicted grades and you've got questions about it, please just come and speak to me about it. It is a process that we go through. Uh, we're very used to it, but of course it's very new for you. So please, please, please just come and have a chat and I'll explain anything, answer any questions you've got, give you all the data that you need. And we will be releasing them on Unifrog as soon as we can and it'll all be all be done properly in one go is, is what we're planning for so yeah we aim to have them out before now so we're working on it we'll get them to you as soon as we can okay uh, in terms of references we don't share those directly with students because that's like um, a sort of a professional thing between us and the universities if a student really does want to see their reference again come and see me uh, and I can show you what we've got okay Hopefully that answers just maybe, us. Just maybe one, one last comment on the references, and and this mm. is something that I that um because we're we're learning all the time in the in the roles that we're doing, um but we we chat with our admissions uh, departments, and um and I wasn't aware until recently that uh, that most admissions staff have both the personal statement and the reference up on on on, on two different screens so they can see it, so uh so it really is important for any students out there to to work really hard. Uh, to get that reference as good as you can because it, it it's looked at side by side with your personal statement um, and you're you're saying that you're all these sorts of things if the reference from your teacher doesn't match that um, and they think hold on a minute this is two different people that's not going to be that's not going to be brilliant um, so I know I know I'm preaching to the converted here and I'm sure this doesn't happen at, at Ilkley but uh, but now that I know that, I, I try and get that in. It's really, really important that your reference is as good as possible because the admission staff are looking at it when they when they see your personal statement. So so work hard, folks. I'm sure you are already. Yeah, yeah. The, the current year 13, I'm really impressed with so far. So uh, what I will say as well, if you're suddenly panicking, um, all of our references are 100% positive. We may not say much, but we will never say anything negative, you know? It's not like a report that we get to parents. So, you know, so-and-so is really not pulling their weight and they're not doing as, you know, there's nothing like that in it at all. We may be scratching our heads and wondering how to make this situation as positive <laughs> as we can, um, but we will never put anything negative in there. Um, so, if, but if you are thinking, oh, you know, I'm a bit worried, have a chat with your teachers, impress them with the little tests that are coming up at the start of October, you know, show them how fantastic you are get those little extra sentences in there and uh, and yeah we can open up all those opportunities for you which is what we want to do of course very good so i'll just take this opportunity to say a big thank you to l and kirk if any more questions come in obviously we, we can answer them but a huge thank you to you guys it's been a we've had a double session haven't you with the year 12s and then the year 13s as well on top of a work day so Thank you very much for the time that you've given us. Thank you to the students and the parents as well. Again, I recognise this is your time, so thank you for coming along. Uh, it'd have been a bit weird if it was just me, Kirk and Elle talking to each other. So 
thank you for coming along to that and for the questions that were asked as well. I hope that we've answered all of them. Um, you, all students who've got my email address, you all know where my office is. And uh, hopefully we can see you, uh, a lot of the students at Next Steps Clinic tomorrow and in PBT and so on. And uh, yeah, Ella shared the, the um, email address there. So parents, please do contact Lancaster. They can give you advice about Lancaster, obviously, um, but also the universities as well, which is, uh, which is very good of them. So thank you very much to you guys for that. Uh, thank you for the thank yous as well. We appreciate that too. Uh, no more questions seem to be coming in. So um, that's great. Thank you again. I'm now going to make sure I press stop record so that it actually saves my recording.